Hello everyone and thank you for attending the webinar SDN, A New Approach to Infrastructure. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please type them into the question section on the menu bar and our speaker will answer them at the end of the presentation. Now I am going to turn it over to David Antilles, the Director of Network Infrastructure at Marin Structure Technologies. David. Thank you, Colleen. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us, SDN, A New Approach to Infrastructure. This is an informative webinar based on SDN, and it's meant to provide you some insight and some information about SDN and in some of the directions that SDN may be headed. Uh, again, SDN at this point is very much a uh, concept or abstract uh, going, going on today uh, for the last several months. This is, this is the summer, this has been the summer of SDN, and I will do uh, my best to kind of demystify what SDN uh, is and the approaches that are being looked at and being taken at. This in no way uh, is related to any hardware or, or uh, third-party vendor cell. It is more of just an informational stack. So please, please, if you have any questions, feel free to ask us. Uh, type it in, in, into the chat forum, and we will be more than happy to answer what we can. Uh, again, SDN is just something that you know that is creeped top top of mind lately, very much like cloud computing has been over the last year and a half. So, without further ado, we will begin, and we will talk about SDN, a new approach to infrastructure. So, in our agenda, what we're going to cover is SDN. What do you need to know? What is it? What's the benefit? Are you ready? Security? And how STN plays in the cloud? So STN, what is it? In, in simplest terms, STN is the physical separation of the network control plane from the forwardy plane, and where control plane controls several devices. If you take a look at the graph, you see that the application layer, and the control layer, and the infrastructure, infrastructure layer are all separated. So what does that mean in terms of traditional networking? Traditional networking finds ourselves where we actually have devices that are coupled together within, within, uh, within a data plane and within a control plane and actually handles the application layer and is controlled layers three through five within the box. So if you take a look at the OSI reference model, the OSI reference model says that we're going to look at the networking and transport layer in order to provide tra um, transit and packet handling for uh, the networks. Level layer seven, or the application layer, is where typically where you, you see all of the applications sit and reside on top of that stack and rides, uh, rides on top of that. What we're talking about now within, within, within SDN is taking this OSI stack and kind of turning it up on its head and now asking us to configure and reconfigure the networks by using layer seven. So layers three, uh, three through five are going to be kind of re have a reduced role, whereas the packet handling is going to be touched more or less on the application layer versus the uh, network and transport um, control session layer. So SE, what does SDN do? So it basically addresses a couple of things. Uh, it addresses the fact that uh, static architecture and conventional networks is ill-suited to the dynamic computing and storage needs of today's data centers, campuses, and carrier environments. All this information can be found across multiple sources across the internet. I use, I specifically use open, OpenNetworking.org as is a primary source of information. Um, but I also use various other blogs that are out there, and I, um, some of the other trade information, you know, from Gartner, uh, Forrester, etc., to provide me the information that that you see here today. But also, uh, please understand that these again are top of early, early, early um, information that that's been pushed out there, and doesn't necessarily represent the end goal or the final product. Again, these are concepts that that are being worked work towards very much like IEEE when they started designing the various different facets of the 802.11 uh, uh, stack. So changing traffic patterns, applications that commonly access geographically distributed databases and servers through public and private clouds require extremely flexible traffic management and access to bandwidth on demand. Again, this is, this is another concept in trying to, trying to understand what's, what's happening in the world today, mobility, 
there is a lot of consumerization of the IT world. So you know, switches and routers are becoming flexible as far as prices, pricing is concerned. The, the availability of specific types of, uh, of devices that are multi, multi-tiered or multi-threaded so they can do multiple things are, 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 are coming about. And you know, as I have said, you know, bring your own device for BYOD, Trun requires networks that are both flexible and secure. And we're going to get to the security part a little bit later, but that's very much too a concern and a question for how SDN uh, behaves with security. Now we also talk about the rise of cloud services. Users expect on-demand access to applications, infrastructure, and other IT resources. We have become an on-demand society, a society that, is, that very much craves its information, whether it be on YouTube or uh, Google or some other, some other uh, social media, whether it be Twitter or Facebook, etc. These are things that we are have grown accustomed to and let's think about it, next generation, generation Y, Z, they are growing very much accustomed to the fact that their information is on demand. Whereas old guys like myself were accustomed to, you know, dialing up, you know, fifty six K modem, even 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 earlier than that on fourteen four watt modem, uh, and waiting for about a half hour for a picture to download. That is not the case anymore. Now we are now we are seeing the the dependencies of cloud computing very much so in today's day and age. Big data, being understanding how analytics play into a big role in today's uh, society is also equally important, and it plays a very big role in SDN because big data is a lot of data. It's being able to pull from multiple sources and being able to do analytics on the fly and produce those cool infographics that we see out there today. Uh, by no means does it mean that we are going to uh, you know, solve the world's problems with big data, but it also means that there's a, you know, a lot of people are still interested in, in solving and creating and, and, and coming up with you know, numbers and analytics to provide to organizations, large, large uh, corporations for the purposes of marketing uh, and uh, fueling their own growth patterns. So understanding what that means, it's, it's basically more bandwidth. It's bandwidth on demand. It's, it's having that information right, at, you know, right in the tips of your fingers, whereas, again, before, 20 years ago, that wasn't, very, that wasn't possible with the, with the current infrastructure that we had back then and now coming off into to today's world. Please bear with me. I have a cold. <laughs> uh, so again, what is it? So we're looking to do a, a, several things with SDN. What we're trying to do is we're trying to understand the data and we're trying to separate networking uh, software into four layers. So forwarding control, services, and management. We're trying to centralize that type of control by management services and control layers. So basically simplifying network design by lowering you know, your operational you know, um, expenses use of the cloud, so for elasticity, for scaling, and flexible deployment, enabling usage-based pricing. Uh, it makes sense to leverage you know, data centers or basically clouds, cloud computing, in order to access that environmental information that you're looking for and using somebody else's bandwidth to do so. So reducing the time to service and constant, correlate cost between uh, based on value and um, location. Common platform. Commonality is a very big theme for SDN. Uh, being able to cross multi multi vendors without fear of, you know, the, the packets or or the information being mishandled. So developing that common tier, that common that common platform is very much uh, necessary, especially for security in the applications and the integration of management. It also enables new business solutions uh, and new new business models. Standard protocols, very big, very big, because as you know, multiple vendors means multiple protocols, multiple standards that they are, are settling on, and in some cases aren't necessarily, you know, quote unquote, open, open standards. This very much relies on that and relies on the fact that they're, everyone's going to play nice. So what, do you, what is the benefit of that, or what, do, what does that provide you? It provides you a choice, and it lowers the overall cost of the, of the product. So broadly applied to network and network security, enterprise service providers, mobile and wireline. So across, the, across multiple tiers, 
across all of those platforms and verticals. We're looking to be flexible and to provide new opportunities for business. So that means being able to generate more more cash flow because you're lowering your op, your operational expense, but it also means being able to be more flexible, more agile, providing your end users with a much a much better, much more robust environment, you know, to play with. So a couple of key things about SDN, you know, I, like I said, you know, SDN is just now coming to the forefront, but it's been around for quite a while uh, as far as, as, as it relates to a concept. Uh, in 2011, the Open Networking Foundation was, was established to actually ratify and come up, you know, to you know, come together with a bunch of organizations to actually start standardizing and agreeing upon what SDN should look like and how it should flow. So over 30 companies are endorsing SDN at this point, and it keeps on growing. And as far as the Open Networking Foundation, the, on the board, Google, Yahoo, Verizon, DT, Microsoft, and Facebook sit, and they're the, the existing members are Cisco, Juniper, HP, et cetera. That's a very big shift in, 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 you know, in thinking for many of these organizations, because obviously every one of them has their own agenda. Every one of them has their own business model. So now we're taking all of this, in, uh, and, and you know they're pretty much mashing up a lot of their ideas to come up with uh, ways and means to to access SDN and make it attainable. It's very exciting because you know in the past that wasn't the case. Everyone had their own ideas of how networking should flow, what the, what people should use on you know at any one particular uh, uh, layer of the OSI model, and you know specifically what protocol should be used. So how do, we, how do we get to SDN? What is it meant to be? It is meant to be directly programmable, so you're able to attack it from the layer 7, being able to get on, to, on that application side and, uh, and configure it that way. No longer will uh, CLI models be, be employed. Uh, at least that's, that's the idea. It's meant to be agile, so abstracting control from the forwarding plane lets administrators dynamically adjust network-wide traffic flow, so basically, again, on the fly, uh, it's centrally managed. So you can actually put your management platforms wherever you think it uh, makes sense within the organization in order to manage that, uh, manage your SDN cloud, if you will, and SDN networking components. So in network intelligence, logically, centralized, it's software-based, and the SDN controllers that maintain a global view, so they have a complete view of the organization, not just tiered approach where you're only, you only have managed visibility of that one particular segment. This is, it, it's meant to try to look at the whole, you know, holistically at the entire view of the, of the environment. It's, a, it's programmed and configured, configured, managed securely and optimized network resources for quick and dynamic automated SDM programs. So these are, these, these are, this is where the abstraction starts to happen. We're going to kind of touch on abstracts and our abstraction. But we're not going to get into that. That that's that comes at a later time as we do, do a deeper dive into SDN, because we can talk for hours on abstraction uh, and abstraction alone, and uh, basically on how how we define the approach to to accessing the the OSI reference model. So open standards based and vendor neutral, very big, very key to this overall uh, approach. Uh, when implemented through open standards, SDN simplifies network design and operation because instructions are provided by SDN controllers instead of multiple vendor-specific devices and protocols. Think of that. So now you can have multiple platforms from multiple vendors and not have to worry whether or not they're going to play nice. We kind of touched on this earlier. This, can, this potentially means cost savings because you're not having to buy specific platforms. You're not having to buy specific vendors and or vendor only. You know, if this vendor is not available in this region of the environment, because now you're controlling that type of your type of configuration, that type of deployment, elsewhere. You have decoupled that that control plane, where you can control the routing and how the routing behaves away from the box. So now the box is just a you know it's, it's basically a platform in which it, it's passing traffic, uh, and it's not making decision points. The decision points are being made elsewhere. So that means that you're able to have a little bit more granular control as to how it's going to do that, and that the box is not going to control how it does that. Very big, very huge. Now, 
it remains to be seen whether or not that's actually going to happen and how fast that's going to happen. But they, I know they are working on that, and it's not a question of when, but uh, not a question of if, I'm sorry, but of when. So we go back to the previous slide that we talked about. We kind of talk about, you know, what, what is it that we're trying to accomplish when we separate networking software into four layers, forwarding control and services manage. So we're trying to optimize each network element. So whether it be a router or a switch, you know, we're trying to, again, we're trying to take, and take a step back and try to pull that information off of that box. So all it's doing is really passing that information along. It's acting as, a, as, a, as an expressway. As we said, as I said earlier, networking and networking devices have been commoditized. People don't necessarily see them as something that, that's fabulous on the environment other than it's wire, it's pro providing transit. And as a network engineer myself, I, I've always hated to hear that because it always took for granted what we've always provided. We provided that pipe, that road, the means, to, you know, means to an ends, the, the, a way to get those applications in and out of the, of the environment. Now what we're doing is we're, we're just solidifying that role and making it much faster by allowing uh, the road not to have to make any decision points. Think of it as we're removing the tolls now. We're removing those tollways. The tollway is now just one tollway. You go through that and that makes the decision. It tells you where you need to go. So now the simplification begins with that, with that first step. So now we take the centralization of management services and control layers. And that, again, it simplifies your network design. And that overall should lower your operational expense. Again, we're not talking about capital expenditures here because there's not much to expend, you know, expend yourself on capital expense at this point. You're pretty much going to be able to leverage what you currently have and then add on top of that. As, we, as, we, as more and more devices come online that are SDN ready or enabled in order to be configured, whether it be through a Contrail or OpenFlow, or one of the other multiple types of uh, control mechanisms. It, it's very important to understand that we are taking that control away from those boxes, and we are simplifying the, you know, the way the network is going to be configured. And being able to deploy at a much quicker rate also means that you're able to go to market at a much quicker rate. So it's very exciting. It's a very exciting time to hear that, and hopefully all of that comes to fruition. I believe it will. Again, it's not a matter, it's not when, it's not if, but when. It does happen. Use the cloud. All of last year and the year before that, cloud computing has been, you know, been bantered about. You know, everyone has their own ideas of what cloud computing is. I'm sure you guys do as well. Uh, it's important to note in, in my world, the way I view cloud is, you know, it's the internet. It's access to the internet, access to services and, and, and um, equipment on the internet, being able to leverage uh, bandwidth that is offered to today, today. So very much like you would see a big mainframe in the, old, in the days of yore. Now we have, we have this, uh, this idea of being able to access across multiple data centers and being able to place those multiple data centers closer to where your, your, your user base may lie. What it does is it means you can follow the sun with that data center. You know, if, if you're that large, or well, it means that you can just put place your data center and not have to worry about whether you have 24 by 7 access. Now that plays very much into the SEN concept because now we are talking about access on demand, and we're talking about decoupling on demand and also routing on demand as being able to set up your pipes and on the fly. So you're able to deploy all of these different boxes out to the internet, to out to these to these data centers, whether you're whether you're using SaaS or IaaS or you know uh, some other platform as far as you know service delivery model, and you're able to deploy faster, you're able to make that much that decision point quicker as to who's going to get what and 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 how fast, and then you're able to reduce the time to this, to service, and that means you're able to get to step to market much quicker with that service, and that means your your user base is going to be happier. We talk about the common platforms for network and security applications. We're going to talk about security, and it's a very big deal with me. I've always been a security guy, and you know, especially when it comes to cloud computing, people have questions. But since cloud computing is tied to the, sort of tied to the hip at it with SDN because they're so 
they're always mentioned together. It doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to operate in the same fashion. Um, but it does enable new business solutions and new thought processes uh, to to deploy these common commonalities. It just it just means that we have to make sure as as SDN grows that we continue to push that push that agenda for common platform access, whether it be a secure uh, security aspect, whether it be a WAN or cloud aspect. Those are things that we have to have to have to view, and not say, "Well, that's not important to me at this point." It it very much is important because not only will you be using this type of service, but your partner or someone down the road or a company across the street or down, you know, in another country, are potentially going to ride over that same wire, and that's that's the other beauty about SDN. It's taking sharing, uh, compiling resources, and being able to make use of those resources in favor of being able to push more and more and more data. Doesn't mean that they're going to be ha have visibility into your own into your own data, but it means you're going to sort of again, like an expressway, you'll be sharing resources and pooling that stuff. So again, lowers the cost, but it, we have to make sure that security lies there cuz we don't want that information getting out and you know, touching someone else's uh, data streams. Standard protocols. I mean, we have OSPF, we have BGP, we have EIGRP. IBGP, et cetera, ISIS. Uh, what do we settle on? What are what are we going to work with? You know, is is any one one of those protocols going to going to win out? Obviously, we know some of those protocols are proprietary, and you know, obviously that's fine and it works well within their own their own domain. However, we all know and we've all probably faced that that that, cr that critical time when we're deploying and we have to inject some type of protocol into another protocol because they don't play nice with each other or there there is an interoperability issue between them. So we have to make it work. What we're trying to do here is trying to standardize those protocols across the vendors so that we're not having to worry about that that issue. Uh, very much the way like OSPF right now works across multiple vendors, sort of sort of the same way. The only the only difference here is that we're trying to make it fit across everyone. No one is no one's protocol is better. No one's protocol is worse, and it, it provides that choice and it lowers the cost. So when it, you, when you lower costs, you'll have more adopters, and when you have more adopters, you'll probably have more users, and so forth and so forth and so on, and that's good for business. Broadly apply. So you have network and network security, enterprise and service providers. Uh, we want to look at flexibility and new business opportunities. So we want to go across multiple tiers. We want to make sure that we're, we're, we're hitting multiple touch points, and that includes what we've talked about before, and that's the network and the network security platforms, the storage platforms, uh, cloud platforms, all of that. Again, they're all tied to each other and will be tied to each other for, for, um, for the foreseeable future, now, unless there's another uh, another thing coming down the road, some other concept, uh, then of course we'll be having that discussion at that point, and I'll be doing a webinar about that. But until then, this is this is it right now. This is the cat's pajamas, and uh, everyone is is uh, seems to be you know licking their chops and trying to get get in front of this train. So, what is the benefit? So overly complex and manually operational expensive networks, you know, you're, you're, you've got your three-tier models, you have your two-tier models, you have your one-tier model. However you slice it, they're all expensive, and they can be quite complex, depending on how much routing you're doing, how much BGP you're doing, how, you know, how much OSPF, how much EIGRP, how much needs to be injected here and there. The security, you, you throw security on top of that, now you got this big quagmire of of, of, of complexity, uh, this labyrinth that you, you have to try to navigate, especially if you're if you're geographically dispersed. And to handle that, you have to have a fleet of people. You have to hire a lot of people in order to do so. So what we're trying to do here is with the configuration is simplify that and orchestrate that. So data center orchestration. We'll kind of touch that on on that a little bit. Uh, by all fully automating and having that data that data point centralized, you're able to better manage, you know, the new type of network that is SDN. 
the, you know, obviously with the old we have we have to sit down there with our design sessions and lots of lots of lots of planning you know are we going to black hole this traffic are we going to allow access to this environment etc um, the hope is with 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 SDN that 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 whole that whole ideology kind of goes away not entirely because obviously some planning has to happen and there's some some understanding as to where the data flow needs to go but it won't take as long to do so and by doing it at, the, at layer seven and having software do it as, as opposed to running it locally on the box that that should you know the idea is that it will reduce the cat the complex operation that is configuring and touching each and every box every time you have a large or major deployment. Uh, the ability to provide features, slow to respond to business requests. I don't know how many times you know individuals have said, "I need to ha I need to get this site up and running," or we have a branch office coming up. I need to send out you know six or seven switches, a router, etc., or we need to get to this data center and get it up uh, up and running with these servers. That's all fine and dandy, and, it, and it's provi you know it's part of the beast right now. It's the nature of the beast at these days. However, it's not very agile. It's not very quick in order you know to to provide these type of services. You know, usually there is a very long lead time. One procurement of the hardware, two from the time the PO gets placed, and you know the the hardware arrives, and now you got to plan you know how we're going to deploy this. And hopefully you know we've done our homework, and you know we need we need to. We need to configure this. We need to update it. We need to do a lot of things to these boxes to get them ready. And then we got to ship them out. And then we got we have to install them, or we send them to a data center for them to be to be installed. Uh, the goal here is to be able to be a bit more agile and be able to provide uh, some uh, more more efficient means of deploying hardware where it needs to be deployed. Uh, and by centralizing that 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 feature set, you're able again to Oh, let me throw just an IP on the box and it's gone. I don't need to configure and throw on a full day's worth of configuration on there. It's going to happen later. When they plug it into the network, it's going to it's going to come online. I'm going to see it and then I'm going to hit a button. You know, sort of like hitting the turbo button. <laughs> there you go. That's the idea. Will it happen like that? Probably not. Not initially at least, but that's the goal. Um, software too hard to deploy. All these different management softwares out there, you know, from all the different manufacturers, great softwares out there. I'm not, you know, I'm not here to bash any software, but certainly I'm also here to tell you that the the concept here is to simplify that. If you if you haven't caught my drift already, everything is about simplifying. Now it sounds it sounds very much complex, and it will be complex initially to simplify because things do need to get worse before they get better. However, working and working in tandem with all these different vendors, hopefully we're able to get there. Packaging kind of kind of goes along hand in hand with the features and being inflexible and slow to respond. It's difficult to scale, and then you toss in reliability. You know, usually when you when you deploy an environment, uh, how many times has it not gone, you know, according to plan initially, or you know, your first go around, you had that that turn up. And you have to roll back because it didn't necessarily work out, and it's not not because of lack of planning, but because you know environments they scale large. You know, you go years and years and years of building an environment, even despite you know your best you know best intentions of uh, uh, documenting and labeling and keeping everything in, intact. Things do come do arise out of need, and things do arise out of out of out of the persistence of the of the of the user that need to happen right away. So that whole uh, agility sometimes gets tossed out the window and the way the, you know, the, the packaging go, goes out the window because we have to actually shove or shoehorn something in there a little bit sooner than we, than we, than we wanted to. So what does, that, what does that mean at the end of the day? It means your reliability is going to suffer. And when it suffers, your user base suffers, and then you get complaints. Now you have IT help, you know, tickets, et cetera, and you're unable to manage that because, uh, despite your best efforts, now you have to now you have to continuously work on this. And if you have the day-to-day -day operations, and you and you have a limited staff, it becomes very increasingly difficult to manage those types of uh, expectations.
So static networks must respond dynamically based on, on business policy. We talk about, I, I think the word here that you need to focus on is dynamically, and the concept is business policy. Because in and of itself, you know, when you're, when you're defining your environments, it has to flow with the environment, and it has to flow with the, with the ideology of the, of the organization. And if the two are not married, typically that they're, then they're, they become disparate, and then they become disjointed. So the, the different agendas, I, you know, the business unit may have an idea of what they're trying to accomplish, and they may not necessarily align with that of the IT organization. And how many times has that happened where you know, a device goes in and the business unit ends up saying, well, that's not working the way we were, we were hoping it to work. And typically what that, what that ends up being is meaning is that we didn't fully understand the requirement and we assumed that you were going build, you know, you were going to build this, this static environment, this type of environment for us. Uh, a lot of times that doesn't necessarily happen in that form or fashion. And the fact that you're, you're not able to respond as quickly is 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 the other is the other issue it's not it's not something that's readily made uh, to change now unlike vms now vms are moving so fast where you're able to spin up spin up these machines and create them on the fly and that's where cloud computing gets you know a lot of its benefit is that you're able to build that the network isn't isn't there yet it suffers still from a lot of static static mechanisms uh whether it be a routing or whether it be a device or an appliance constraint, it, it doesn't move that quickly. So it's kind of lagging behind, and SDN looks to address that as well. Manual policies. We're trying to automate these so that it works in conjunction and orchestration with the network of tomorrow. It's taking these monolithic network services, so these very large environments that you know we've built out there, whether it be you know at the rack spaces of the world, Amazons of the world, and we're trying to uh, scale our environments to meet demand and sometimes trying to do so in a fashion that's quick also means that we're trying to do things just like in the previous slide where we're trying to shoehorn things out of need and that typically results in some issue with with the environment sometime down the road where we black hole some traffic or maybe we forget to add in a network into a firewall so now we're trying to figure out you know uh, you know what's being what's being blocked. Maybe our NAT pools are not all 100 percent, and maybe we're not allowing something. You know, maybe it's a static NAT or, you know, what have you. Those things aren't necessarily fluid, if you will. It takes a little bit of time and planning, and then you know it doesn't scale very fast. Again, networking is slightly behind the times as far as being able to be VM ready, if you will. Essential applications. These are things that you know. Mobility is is very much in tune with. Uh, it's very much a way of life. How many of us go can't go throughout a day without looking at one of one or two of our app key applications? It is an absolute necessity now these days that we have a phone because we're connected. We as a business and an organization, it's a, almost a requirement. I'd hate to say that it is a requirement, and I hate to say that it is necessary, but we're very much tied at the hip with these devices. How many of us have more than one? Whether you have an iPhone, an iPad, you know, a Notepad, some type of Galaxy, or some type of Android device. These are all things that are being put on the environment today and are chewing up extra bandwidth, and not just from a business application sense, too, also from a consumerization aspect. You know, whether it be streaming movies, streaming music, etc. These are things that we as organizations are trying to provide to our end users, and we have to make sure that we are able to be agile. Now, SDN looks to address that agility question, but also by simplifying how applications become used and are able to be ported across the environment. In some cases, uh, when you look at cloud computing, you know, one of the key one of the key elements for cloud computing is to understand whether or not your 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 environment is cloud ready, and meaning do you have applications that are actually ready to go onto the cloud, and that you know that could be whether you're using some type of ERP system or some type of imaging or or what have you. It's the same the same holds true with SDN. We have to take a look on whether or not we are able to provide that type of service. Within that within that framework, if if we can't, or if you can't, 
it, it's it's difficult to justify you know being able to do that, being able to start building these types of networks. But I I, I don't I think we don't have much of an option today or going forward because we're very much again we're tied at the hip with these with these applications uh, and with our mobility. I mean I. I I don't I don't see many PCs out there anymore. I see more and more laptops and there those are starting to fade. People want to take their stuff with them. So, again, the bottom line here is to reduce complexity and the ability the inability to scale quickly and efficiently and reduce if not eliminate dependence on specific vendor hardware. It won't be that easy nor will it happen overnight. It's not a question of if, but when. And I I I, I firmly believe that, you know, we're moving in the right direction. However, it will be a few years before we actually see you know, the fruits of the labor that you know that's being put forth out there by these uh, by the you know open open source and 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 uh, other other organizations out there. But you know whether or not we we decide to grab and grasp it as organizations will will determine how fast. You know the the uh, the research gets done and how fast these standards get get put into play. Typically, it's usually some some type of a, a pivot point where some organization really needs to have it. And it's fairly large, and usually that that's what usually cascades and starts you know pushing the ball down the hill. So that brings us to: Are you ready? Depends on your immediate need. Just very much like cloud computing. If you have no, if you don't have a need to have a that type of dynamic environment, then quite frankly, you know that's the very first step. Is does it make sense to start looking in that direction? There are tools. There are there are there is hardware that's coming out just now. There are there are means and mechanisms, software packages that are being pushed out there, that that do orchestrate SDN type environments. Are they a hundred percent? Certainly not. Are they? But they are a very good first step. So you have to depend. You have to you have to look at your environment. You have to look at your requirements and see whether or not it makes sense for you to deploy SDN. And again, it can mean anything from you, you have many many different applications that have to come online in a very short fashion, or you're expanding very quickly, or you have a need to solidify your 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 uh, your network and grow it and you're using you're using more with less resources when you're using more with less resources typically that means you have a large environment with not a lot of people running it SDN is looking to address that model because you know you're simplifying the orchestration of those of, of the network you know what is your initiative what are you looking to get out of it what are you trying to accomplish as a business you know what? What is your what is you know your going to business strategy, and does it does it align with the need to go into an SDN architecture? Do you have an initiative? You know what are the consequences of not doing something? Again, we have to, as business owners, as business as as business stakeholders, we always have to look at what is the consequence of doing nothing versus what is the consequence of doing something. And I know you know this question can often be quite benign. Uh, you know, ah, I'll think about it later. It's not it's not necessarily. Let's just get it done. However, you know the impact is always there. Let's take for example, and this is very much a true world, you know, real world scenario where we're trying to build a traditional network, and we don't think about you know the impact of adding additional phones to the system. Whether or not you know it's you know it's a requirement is not top of mind. It's just. Do we want to add all that, you know, that extra bandwidth or that extra need for bandwidth, or the extra need for services and QoS, or are we just going to wait and delay the inevitable? Do we set it up beforehand? Do we set it up afterwards? Those are the things that we have to think about. Um, another another good example is wireless. When you what what are the consequences of setting up a new wireless environment on a current infrastructure? Uh, you're you're taking your baseline network and you're saying you know what it's functioning properly right now but we want to put in some wireless access points uh, we're going to go full tilt what is that re what is that consequence conversely what is the consequence of doing nothing you know perhaps it's a physician's office or perhaps it's a you know a, a, you know educational facility and you want to compete with the Joneses down the road because they're getting more more and more uh, user-based because of the features that they're adding. 
Now we have to take a look at the environment and see whether or not we can augment. Typically, the, typically the answer at that point is, yes, we're going to augment. Typically, the, the, the thought process does not include, we're going we're to throw a whole lot more into the environment. The network guy is usually there holding the bag saying, ah, guys, look down here. I'm not going to have enough bandwidth to move. And that's where the static comes into, and that inflexibility, you know. It, it, that, and that's where SDN is looking, looking to, you know, to solve that ability so that you're able to, you know, quickly move stuff about the environment and being able to reduce, you know, again, that time to get the, you know, time to market, time to business, to provide services. So do you really need to care now? That again, well, let me let me put you this way. I would say you should care about it if if you're interested in becoming more agile with your environment. I would say you should care about it because it is going to happen. Do you need to care about it now? Not necessarily. I wouldn't say this month, next week, you know, two days from now. But you should be thinking at least have an eye towards it and understanding what the what the impact is going to be on your environment what the impact and what the net cost is going to be to your to your bottom line does it make sense again those three those three questions beforehand really do play into do you really need to care um, if you haven't asked those questions of yourself or of your organization then quite frankly you, it needs to start happening because you need to start putting those analytics together and understanding what that consequence is and if whether you're, you're going to follow that or not. Or perhaps maybe you're not going to build your own. You're just going to piggyback off of someone else's. Very much like the cloud services, you're going to use someone else's environment you know, to, to leverage SDN and making that work for you. So you're taking existing platforms and coupling it together. Very much like you take your existing applications and you offload it to a uh, service provider. Will it improve my business? Well, it depends. It depends. It depends whether or not you're looking to, uh, you know, what your benefit, what you're looking to get out of it. It's all relative. Um, I always tell, I always tell individuals, you know, don't don't look at the guy down the road and try to keep up with him and try to say, hey, I want I want what he has. You may not necessarily have the framework to do so. Uh, again, you're talking about concepts here. You're talking about something that's going to happen down in the future. You want to be leading edge, not necessarily bleeding edge. And in some cases, you have to understand what that's going to buy you. Again, what are the consequences? Will it really improve my business? It, I, it probably won't hurt. But at the same time, you know, what, what is that immediate need? What initiative are you trying to, are you trying to solve? And what is that business, what is that business case? And do you really care, you know, to do so at this very moment? Is this just hype? Everyone's going to tell you their different opinions. In my opinion, it's a little bit of both. I know it's kind of sitting on the fence, but I'll tell you this: depends on what you read. Um, if, if you're looking at, uh, you know, at the at the, at the at the service foundation, they very much say this is going to happen. I believe it's going to happen. For me personally, I think we're going to get some some form or fashion where this is going to actually happen. How fast it comes to market, 100 percent, will again. Will, will be determined by market requirement, by, by need of the market, how fast the market is looking to, to get into this. But it also, it also the, re, the underpinning requirement there too is how fast the vendors are willing to work with each other and establish that baseline for, for interoperability, the protocols, et cetera, and building that commonality on that platform. So how will you know when it's time? Uh, like anything else, it has to be right for your organization. Um, it has to make financial sense. You have to look at the cost and now and look at the you know the consequences. What is the what is the weight of that cost? What is the weight of not doing something? What is the weight of doing something? And you know what is the buy-in? What's that initial buy-in going to cost me? And very in some very instances, you can actually create these smaller platforms, which allow you to kind of dabble with it, kind of play with it. You know. You find some remote location, or you find some, some, some smaller data center that you have services in there, and you and you find out, you know, whether or not this is something that you know, you have a pension for at this point. Um, today, very much like any other any other new new concept, there are going to be pain points. 
initial understanding of how it operates and how it works. But I beg you not to not to give up on it and to take, do take a deep dive and take a good look at that, look that information that's out there. You know, look at the look at the juniper or the junipers of the world. You know, they're pretty much uh, uh, in a good space because they've already done that with their hardware, with the separation of control, of, you know, the control plane and the forwarding plane. So they understand already, you know, what what SDN is pretty much about because they're built pretty much like SDN. Cisco, HP, and some of the other organizations are just, you know, they're catching up and they're starting to recognize that the need is there to, to move in that direction. That brings us to security. You know, security is one of those things that either you like it or you hate it. Um, because it either adds complexity or it adds uh, what I call, you know, the, the, you know, the, the, the security blanket. You know that ability to to sleep sleep well at night, but doesn't come without a cost. So you know you take a look at your traditional firewalls, IDP, IDS, SSL, VPNs, network management. I, you know 802.1x, so basically UAC solutions, IPsec encryption, transport layer security, and VPN. You know remote access or RDP, etc. Um, let's not lie. And let's not let's not let's face facts. It is difficult at times to deploy these within you know cloud types of environments and it will will continue to be difficult because security is one of those things unless it's driven by policy and driven by you know by uh, upper management security usually falls flat on its face you know putting in a firewall putting in an IDP here you know putting in and you know and whole security you know the whole defense in depth you know initiatives etc none of that means a hill of beans if, if if that environment is not being pushed by policy we can put in the best firewalls, the biggest firewalls, the biggest IDP, IPS, and monitor everything under the sun. However, if it's not driven by policy and there is no clear direction by management on how it wants to how it wants to handle that uh, security mechanism, and quite frankly, the buy-in for for the rest of the world, you know, for the rest of your organizations, isn't going to be there. The very first time somebody kicks back and says, "Hey," This is too slow. This is too clunky. Or some management, some manager down the road in Bangalore says, "You know what? This is not my cup of tea. This is slowing down my operation. You need to take it off." If it's not being pushed by process and not being pushed by policy, guess what? It's going to get removed. Somebody's going to cry. You know, the squeaky wheel. You know, is you know going to get his way at that point, and then it just torpedoes all of your initiatives. So now you got a gaping hole. So what's the point at that point? You know, you uh, of having that, you know, your your cool security system. So when you look at to today's security systems, uh, you know, you're looking for firewalls for, for for perimeter defense, domain control, intrusion detection, everything we just discussed. All all those mechanisms should should have a place in your security policy. Yesterday's security policy was written for yesterday's technologies. They are very much still uh, live concepts, live ideas. However, they need to be uh, modified and changed and adapted to today's environments. And that includes mobility. That includes wireless. That includes cloud-based security. And it certainly most, most certainly uh, includes SDN security. Being able to match your corporate policy to that and you know, making that part of an uh, explicit component of what you're trying to initiate and trying to deploy is very critical. If you don't, again, you're going to have issues down the road, and the adoption rates for that type of security, whatever security mechanism, is going to be pretty low. So SDN security will need to evolve. It needs to be fluid. It needs to be agile. It needs to be, you know, so you should be able to configure it on the fly. It needs to be able to match, you know, uh, pace by pace, the ability for of SDN networks as fast as that they're deployed. It shouldn't be like we just deployed now, we gotta go deploy a firewall somewhere. We have to go deploy we have to deploy a a IDP somewhere and it's hardware. So now we're only looking at IO, we're not actually looking at the packets. It has to be dynamic. It has to be able to shape shift itself. It has to be able to move with the environment. And you have to be able to be uh, make those changes on the fly. And certainly down the road I think and I anticipated it has to be automated. Because if we are going to grow these environments and we're going to grow them fast, and if what SDN represents, again, we're looking at software-defined networks. So being able to create these networks on the on the go, and you know, deploy all these boxes, 
conversely, we should we should be able to automate the process, the security process, so that it is able to keep up with that deployment. If not, as at, at least at a certain point, to be automating a certain component, whether it be the IDP or just the firewall rules or or et cetera, but being able to 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 modify and deploy that just like the way we would deploy new SDN networks, SDN security needs to handle it the same way. It needs to be in conjunction. And that brings us to the cloud. Again, we we were talking we were talking about all the different uh, different concepts about the cloud and all, all the different concepts that you know the cloud brings, whether it be SaaS, IaaS, whether it be application hosting, you know, data center hosting, all of the different uh, you know abstractions that are out there. Uh, we have to we have to look at the mechanisms that drive the need to use you know the. the the cloud, whether it be your application, your user base, your you know, your need for on demand, always on access, etc., and then how SDN plays into that and how it orchestrates within that cloud. So if you take a look at this, you know, you have your cloud BSS OSS, you know, out there, and you're federating now. So if you think about some some of your current deployments, if you have any federated servers where you're basically taking policy and expanding it across multiple tiers, it's very much the same because now we're taking we're taking the WAN and we're virtualizing. We're virtualizing across the WAN. We're using controllers. In this case, uh, the example is an open flow controller to handle the databases and handle the, handle the information and all the aggregation points and pushing across layer seven, being able to orchestrate multiply um, uh, and multiplying that, that, um, that ability across all these different platforms. So not only does that buy you flexibility, it buys you speeds, and it buys you, you know, it impacts your service delivery time. So your cloud backbone, your edge device gets a set of information, not just from itself. So you're not just programming that box. It's coming across from a centralized environment, which has a holistic view, an entire all-encompassing view of the environment. So you're readily available, able to see that and make, make better judgments and decisions and then push that down from there. So we look at service chaining. So in the cloud, we, you know, we, we have custom applications. We're going to have analytics. We're going to have services, VMs, and controllers. And all those play very much into how the cloud is constructed, whether it be your own private cloud or if you're using a service. And then you have data center orchestration handling all of those types of uh, configurations today on the software side. So we're taking that concept and we're extending it across to the network side. So configuration copy services, and then you have local control, and then all that forwarding information of how to get there. So then you have these forwarding blades, and then you have this control processor. So basically, these are concepts within Juniper that allow you to make decision points quickly and get out to the x86 cloud, or in this case, your virtualized environment. So this is just very much an idea of how the service chain works. So we're looking at an internet router, physical box, coupled with a virtualized firewall, coupled with a virtualized application delivery controller, and then it sits with a Hyper-V switch or hypervisor or what have you, some type of virtualized environment, and then couple that with your virtualized web server. All those components make up the cloud, you know, help, help make up the cloud, but also help make the SDN construct much more solid because they're tied. They're, they're very much you know, required to be, to, be, um, to be cohesive and understanding uh, that you're able to push these things as quickly and deliver these quickly and then configure them quickly. So that brings us to our final slide where we're talking about, you know, here we're running VM as a web server and we're running the hypervisor switch. Again, whether it be a, a traditional switch or, or a software switch, then we have an application delivery controller and then the Hyper-V switch hypervisor. Again, on Multiple sides of the coin here, you're, you're running two different hypervisors, you could run two different abstracts, and then you have your mid-tier application, so whether it be a you know, uh, custom application or some uh, ERP application, and then that's an overlay, it sits on top of the physical network. So the physical network is able to gain access to this environment, and this environment alone is being run as an SDN, where it's being delivered you know, on demand quickly, being, uh, being delivered, uh, deployed quickly because you're able to, to, to virtualize certain components. You're able to, to, to uh, handle the vSwitches 
you know, at a much quicker pace because you're decoupling that forwarding and control plane. You know, the, the one thing I do want to leave you as far as SDN is that, you know, it, it is still very much in early stages. You know, it's been going on for a couple of years, but in, in, in technical, technical terms, you know, that's like, you know, 10 years, two years is 10 years now these days. But for, for adoption and uh, deployment of environments, that's very much still in its infancy. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the, you know, the next couple of years holds for SDN and how the orchestration, how the tools, how all of these, uh, these sets, these, these um, deployment sets are going to actually function across the environment. I, 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 I welcome you to, to look online, do some research, see if it does make, make sense and if it is a fit within your organization to get into SDN, if not the cloud and um, being able to use some of those, those newer, newer generation services, next gen services. So we have next generation firewalls, next generation routers and switches, all of which at some point are going to start going into the next la next layer where, are the, where they're going to have the hooks. And we, all, like I said before, we do have appliances out there already which do have that, that, that hook into SDN orchestration software that allows it to, to talk and be orchestrated and configured on the fly just, just as I have described. It's just a matter of time before you know it becomes much more much more commonplace. So, that being said, if there are any questions, please let me know. If not, uh, I'd like to thank you again for joining us today, and hope you uh, have a wonderful afternoon and uh, enjoy the rest of your week. David, we do have a couple of questions. Um, if you, if anyone has a few more minutes, I know we're right at eleven, but if anyone would like to stay. Um, First question is, how do we prevent vendors from offering better features of SDN that other vendors do not support? This seems like a method to promote a vendor-specific software-defined network. Right. That is very much a question I had initially because, yes, you're, you're taking a look at multiple vendors who have this approach of software, and they're, you know, it almost seems like they're trying to push their agenda, you know, or their, their platform, you know, use me to orchestrate SDN. The, the, the hope at the end of the day is that it won't matter which of those organizations or vendors you use. Uh, the hope is that, that the standard gets ratified and it gets defined so that whether you're using you know, uh, vendor A, vendor B, vendor C software, that the end result is all going to be the same. The way it behaves will be the same. It's just you know, your preference for that particular vendor. And hopefully the cost and delivery models will be in line with, with that depending on you know the level of complexity or tiered tiered uh, structure that typically vendors uh, engage in but uh, at this point there isn't there isn't anything governing that you know the obviously the goal of setting up SDN is to be vendor agnostic but uh, as we all know sometimes that doesn't necessarily play out you know I'd like it to beta Sony and you know and then VHS with RCA Back in the day, you know, everybody had their own idea of which one was better, and one, or one won out. And it's not necessarily usually the best technology that wins out. But let's hope that you know they're actually able to stay on path and uh, being able to remain agnostic to each other. Okay, um, and then yeah, how do vendors maintain their identity when conforming to SDN? You kind of went over that a little bit, but I don't know if you wanted to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, it's that same question. You know, how how do they maintain their their own individuality, and you know, as far as boxes, because you know, at some point, you know, the overall goal is to you know, you should be able to buy a, a black box for that matter. You know, with ports, and basically, we're going back, kind of taking a step back, and you're buying a, just a box with the electronics on the inside to pass that data through. Again, everyone's going to have their little hooks and their little their little pitch about what what um, you know how how it engages SDN and you know what software package you know will work you know wonderfully with them. You know, the overall goal here is to is to maintain agnostic. But again, they're going to have to make a dollar, <laughs> and you know they're going to bake in something special with you know whatever they call special into that in, in into that in order to make that dollar. Uh, the unfortunate reality is that uh, at this point it's it's hard to say what you know how they're going to they're going to achieve that. 
it's just a, it's just a matter of seeing you know what, what it is they're going to offer uh, to, to the end user, and hopefully it's something that uh, you know again it remains true to the SDN concept and you know to the open source concept. Okay, and then just one um, more question: Do you have any um, examples, or know of any companies that are using this at this time? Uh, well, I, I, I kind of listed some of the founding members, and there are, you know, Juniper does uh, dip, use uh, SDN, has their own offering for for SDN. Cisco does, HP does, as as do you know some of the you know software packages you know from um, you know that are out there. Google being a big player is is in the SDN market. I think you're going to see a lot more play from the Googles of the world, the Yahoos of the world, into the SDN space, because now you know you're talking about development and application development to handle the orchestration of environments. So my my guess is that you're going to see very, many more of those organizations such as that get much more involved. Uh, you know the IBMs of the world because there, this is another step back into the, you know, for them, into the into the foray of networking. Whereas IBM used to be, you know, with Xerox, used to be king of the castle. They got bumped off later on, you know, and now here's here's the step back because now the networking is taking a step back to the application and and uh, software design mechanism. So, to answer the question, you know, pretty much all the major players out there have something in 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 line at this point. And they are very much cooked, you know, got something in, you know, going on in their in their skunk works at this point. Okay, great. Thank you so much, um, David, for presenting and thank you everyone for attending. Hope you enjoyed the webinar. Um, if you have any more questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, and we will send out a recording of the webinar as well um, in case you tuned in late or um, anything like that. So thank you so much and have a great day. Thank you all. Thanks, David.